located in the Central Valley of California. The Fresno Fire Department. Established in 1877, the Fresno Fire Department is one of the oldest departments in the United States, rich in history and tradition. Today on the battalion, we start a new 48 hours with Fresno Fire with the crew from Engine 13. Prior to roll call, Firefighter Specialist Keola Park and Firefighter Specialist Engineer Justin Simmons get in a quick game of table tennis before their 48 hour shift starts. Captain Jewel starts his day going over some paperwork. Oh, you know what? No, just, just leave the test tone out. Okay, can you just say this thing and you have to be better at this? Okay. Firefighter Park, as you may remember, is all about keeping the station squared away. Today is no different. He mans the lawnmower, and with competition always in play, Firefighter Simmons is on it. What we're doing here is we're doing our uh, Sunday emergency equipment checks. For us, it's a little more involved than a regular engine company because we are the USAR team, so we have lots of extra tools and equipment that we have to check out, one of which is our surface-applied Kirby Morgan dive system. And so what we do is we just sort of fire up the system. We charge this, uh, our dive control unit here. It has, um, we were using the, uh, our large one-hour MSA bottles. We're a brand new system. We just, we just went MSA on the whole department. So we've changed our, our hookups here from uh, scuba adapters onto the uh, DIN adapter that fits the uh, MSA bottles. So we could just use our fire service bottles. Uh, we don't have to worry about having scuba bottles. And uh, it works really well for us with our dive control unit from Kirby Morgan. And so we just, in the morning, we hook up our MSA cylinders and then we'll fire up the system. I'll hook a mask up to it. And we'll just check our communications are also in this box too, our, our radio hardwire comms and on our surface supply dive system, and so I'm just doing a check on that. So that's just one of our Sunday duties over here at Station 13. So this is our main airline we're hooking up here. Just snug, so I can air up my mask. Online. Right here. All right. Back. Red. Take some tension off. It allows the allows this airline to move move freely with the diver, so he's not getting hindered by this by this line. 
and it takes tension off all this fitting so you're not, you don't have a breakage here due to the, some of the rough conditions we dive in. This is a nice feature. So we check all this out, turn our pony bottle on. Now we'll do our little communications and breathing check on our mask. The dangerous canals that were designed for irrigation for the Central Valley farmers years back have become very dangerous for the citizens of the city. Drownings occur all too often. The crew from Station 4 has arrived with both their ladder truck and the USAR rig. They must stay ready for any call that may come in during these training exercises. Captain Chad Tucker, the USAR team coordinator, along with Captain Domlin Jewell, previously a master commercial diver, gather all crew members to plan today's training evolutions. But, uh, but the good news is we have the primary diver with the system always ready to go, come and grab you. So it should be pretty safe, not too far away from us. Like I said, just be careful. If you go in there and there's shopping carts and stuff like that, you probably don't go over unless you don't want to risk it. But I wouldn't recommend just going over a shopping cart. For some reason, you have to do that, I would pull it out of there. Go right in there. Right but I think these are pretty clear. Do the one diver in, have backup diver. In the water, that. doing some filming. And then he can dive next. Yeah, and then we'll just, just rotate keep like that. that way. The other guy then come the in. Primary will get out, yeah. Sounds good. So I'm trying to get the movements here. Get out of here. Okay? You guys have any questions right now about anything? There are over 30 firefighters that are cross-trained for both the USAR and the water rescue team. That includes first responders from Engine 14. The crew from Engine 13 brought both their engine and their utility truck that carries a lot of gear for water rescue and is also used to carry the huge airbag for jumpers when needed. Planning is key to keep all crew members safe during training. And training is key to keep all first responders safe on the fire ground or when performing a rescue. Firefighter Specialist Park is the first to dive under the canal for a safety check. The dangers of claustrophobia can happen to any diver. This evolution is part of that training. The canals in Fresno have many bridges that cross them. And this is the point where a person can get stuck with the current being so strong. Being able to maneuver under the bridge is not easy for a save or a recovery. The firefighters use a GoPro for underwater filming of the evolution. They're participating in a water rescue exercise. This training was part of our battalion live feed when it was filmed on location. Firefighter specialist John Pepper and Captain Mark Woolley tend to diver Robert Garcia. Fresno Fire's Water Rescue Coordinator has chosen to use two of MSA's Bing Boy One Hour Bottles, giving them a total of two hours of bottom time. So we got the two bottles here coming in. It's functioning off of this bottle here, the blue bottle here. 
and it's getting low, but you can see that that's the one running air. When we want to switch over to the other bottle, we can flip that, which he's going to do right now. And so now we're operating off this bottle and we can change out this bottle. And so it's all labeled there of which one you're running into. So we can just continuously run, run air to the uh, diver as long as he's down. These are rated one hour bottles a piece. Like that? Yep. Good job, Phil. Yeah. Oh, I was, oh, I was doing a free flow a little bit. No, I no, just when it came out of the water. I think the current. The, see the current. Dude, too. I don't know what it was, Dom. Is it uncomfortable? Dude, that was how pushing. Maybe the current was just so much stronger this time. But the previous times that we've done this live the last couple of years, it never pushed into my face like that. Did you I, have it the right way? Yeah. The nose piece? Yeah, I had to hold, keep one hand on it, yeah, peeping it off my ear. Oh, it's bad. Yeah, it might just be the current whipping through there. You went through that middle one, too. That's yeah. The, that's the strongest. Uh, yeah. So. <laughs> Captain Tucker suits up in preparation for his dive. It really felt like somebody's punched me in the mouth. Really? Yeah. Mine was mine. Another diver readies himself to safely enter the canal. Firefighter specialist Cody Philbin from Station 4 is on the headset and he checks with his divers to make sure that they have the correct amount of weights. Captain Tucker maneuvers under the canal's bridge as part of his evolution. Hawaiian Islands uses a waterproof case on his iPhone to take a few vids of the crew training under the water. Thank <laughs> you. 
to go down too. Yeah. Wow, so Captain Tucker is on the hard hat. Um, everybody did really well. I didn't see anybody struggling or anything. Everybody seemed to move around great. Um, I'll work on those weight belts, try to make them a little tighter for you guys so we can tighten them up more. Uh, anybody have any things that they saw that we could improve on? Anything like that? Any plates? Or any issues down there? Any new ideas? Just the see, I, when I went down the second time, just to let you know, I was 3-3-3, three, 2-2. Three, three, two and two. Uh -huh. Didn't leak. Didn't have that pressure. Use the same mask. What did you have so, the first time? First time threes all the way around. Yeah. So it was too tight down here. Yeah. So I was causing that nose block to, yeah. to pinch off too much. So that's. But it was it was kind of slightly adjusted. I was like, oh, I'm taking on water. That's why I didn't want to loosen anything. Adjusted, but then I had a lot of pressure on that. So I was I was uh, twos here and then threes up here. So. And that's like the standard for most people. The threes, like you just said, the threes, three on the top, two on the bottom, is good. Um, but you can adjust that. My advice is really just when you're working or during these trainings, memorize what's good. I think those issues guys were having might have been just a fit problem. Sometimes you want it, you want it on, you want, you have a tendency to want it almost too tight on the surface because it feels like it's just sagging off your face. But once you get into the water, it tends to be okay. So I would suggest trying three, doing the three, two, and diving it, and then coming back out like shoulder if it's really bad. Thank you, Yola. Yeah, it's funny you call. I just got that, uh, my, my nice new watch, man. That thing is sweet. Thanks for turning me on to that, that website. I, that really worked out well. I'm definitely going to use them again. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'll see you in a few. Bye. The crew of Engine 13 responds to a, I saw something floating in the river call. They always hope for a save, but many turn into a recovery operation. They arrive at a beach near the station with easy access to launch the boat. Time is always of the essence, but safety is first when deploying equipment. The boats on this trailer are designed for quick deployment. They quickly head out, skimming across the water. In this business, time is of the essence. They have to check every cove and every corner. This river may look small, but the current is very swift in some places. And if this person is unconscious, they hopefully have floated off to safety and may be sitting on the banks. The crew sees something far out in the distance. Kind of a dead end the crew continue to search. Left turn! An object, what seems to be the described raft that may have a person clinging on for life, is seen in the distance. 
Oh, it's an old, hey, let's go check out that raft. Right the there. crew there flies into position. Getting sad, turn it off. Or pull it up. Okay, okay. neutral, probably good. Um, found the victim raft. So on the vic looks like they have to self-extricate. Yeah, out. they got some stuff. We got a shoe in here. So somebody might have bailed off, so we're gonna continue our search. The crew heads back to the landing location. After a grueling morning of training, the crew from Engine 13 go to a local burger spot to grab a bite. Nice. Nice stuff. Beautiful. Nice down there. Super warm, man. Yeah. I was floating in the... It's totally just... perfect campus. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't taken my wet food top off. It's so great. Perfect. Yeah. Dude. Uh, what's that? It's my ranch, right? Oh, don't be double dipping. Night falls on station 13. Later in the night, the crew gets a call. Oh, 